Well, hello there, friends. This is Sandy Alnock, artist and paper crafter here on YouTube, and I am delighted to bring you the 24 Tags of Christmas 2015. This is day three. That means with four tags done every single day, we are halfway through after the end of this video. Yay! I'm very excited. I'm doing a giveaway on my blog, so make sure you click through in the link in the description down below to check that out and get more information on entering that giveaway. Today I'm going to work on some elves and I'm going to be using Copic markers. It's going to be a little longer video than the others, so I want to warn you of that. There are these darling elves from My Favorite Things and I've stamped each one of them onto a piece of Nina cardstock and some of them I paired with other elements from the stamp set and I'm going to use different kinds of lighting throughout this. There's, this first one is going to have upper right lighting. That means the lighting is coming from the upper right. There's also in this one, there's going to be a little goober that you're going to get to see here in a few minutes that I decided to leave in because it's educational, right? So you'll get to see me screw this up, but I'm using a couple colors to create some shading and the light is coming from the right. So there's a shadow underneath his hat and the light, the shadowy shadows are all on the left. Now here's where I went a little crazy with my RV10. And instead of trying to fix it right now, I decided I would let it dry first. And that's one of the things that you can do before you start deciding that something is a total fail. Let it dry and see what happens. And when you see it in contrast with the rest of the colors on the image, you might find it, it looks okay after all. So I'm filling in all of the little areas in my lightest red, which is an R17. Now, when you're coloring red, this is just a tip that I give a lot here on YouTube, but I want to make sure everybody gets it since we're coloring a lot of red objects during this holiday season. You want to start out with a red for your light red, not a pink. If you start out with a pink, you're going to have some issues, but if you start out with a red, then it's going to give you the look of an actual red object. R89 is my favorite, favorite, favorite dark red shadow color, no matter what the light color is. You could use an R17, R14, R24, R35. There's a whole lot of reds that you can use for your base red, but this R89 works with all of them, as does this mid-tone R37. R37 blends pretty nicely with just about all of them, unless you get into the pinks. As soon as you get into the pinks, then you have to have another transition color. So when if I use something that has a pink for a highlight, I usually have to have a four color blend because three colors just doesn't quite cut it. And then I'm going back over with the light color again to add another layer of it and look how beautiful and rich it gets. Now I, I did forget that one part in the hat up there, but apparently it fell out of, out of the filming because it suddenly looks like it's blended. So I'm pretty sure I did that. Here I'm going over the colors again on the face and you can see that pink came out of it because it dried and all I had to do is put my skin tone over it again and boom, it was just fine. So let things dry and then add another layer of skin tone colors over it and you're probably okay. You can pull that color right back to being a flesh tone instead of being like a weird <laughs> bright pink little guy. I'm going to be using the same colors throughout all of these to color. So I'm using a G29 for my dark shadow. There's also a G28. They are nearly indistinguishable. So if you have one, you don't need both for sure. And if you look at the hex chart, you'll notice on there that they really do look pretty identical. If you're not familiar with the hex chart, you can go to my blog and the hex chart link is right there. And you want to see if you want to see that it's a chart that I made for choosing your Copic colors. And it's helpful to see how colors compare to each other. So it's a visual comparison rather than numerical. And a lot of people keep telling me, which I'm so excited about, that it's changed how they color, changed how they select their colors. And I'm so, so glad that that has helped people so very much because that is why I've shared it. And it's, you know, just a few bucks, but it seems to be a very well worth, well worthwhile investment for most of the people who have been enjoying it. So you can go to my blog to pick that up. And there's also a link directly in the description down below to get straight to the hex chart. So I'll explain more of some of the same coloring things now using central lighting. Central lighting is meaning from the very middle. And this is one of the common ones that a lot of people will do because they'll, they'll put a shadow on both sides of an object basically. And that's what I'll be doing here. 
and there's a shadow underneath the hat on all of them because that'll make the hat look like it's kind of poofing out from above his face and then at the bottom of the face so I'm uh, just trying to to add some dimension to it and this time I'm going to give him a green hat and layer those colors on. My green marker is dying on me here. You can see that I'm struggling with it. So sometimes when your markers start to give you fits, it's worth it just to go and re-ink them. And here I've got a spot where I had some green marker that went out of the line, so I just went over it with some zero marker and did it a second time. I'll let it dry, and if it still isn't pushing back into the hat, I can go back and do it again. It's best to do it in little bits, a little bit at a time, so that you don't end up with you know a big blob of the colorless blender pushing in so you want to let it dry so it's only pushing that ink back into it and you want to color from the outside letting that letting it push it rather than trying to just color on top of it because it'll just pull out all different directions so now let's go back and do some shading here we'll go in with our g29 and add some real depth to this and I'll put some shading on both sides of the hat. So you'll see this is a very common way that people shade things. I usually recommend that when you start doing any shading, if you're gonna to try to do any directional lighting, whether it's center, left, or right, that you just pick one. Choose one and stay with it all the time until it becomes so natural that you don't think of anything else. Like you just start coloring and your mind knows exactly where to put those shadows. It will come eventually. I know it's hard at first, but after you do it for a while, it just becomes second nature, but you need to focus on it for a while. And what I often will do is take a stamp, stamp it on a piece of paper, and then start figuring out where those shadows are. And I draw an arrow from where the light's gonna be, sketch out those shadows, and then I leave that in the stamp pocket or whatever container you keep your stamps in so that I can just follow that every time. It's a great way to do that work once and not have to really do anything more with it and think so hard every time you do your coloring. Now, if you were to do a bunch of tags like this, this would be a great practice to just get one set of lighting down. Just light all of them the same way and just make sure you're doing the whole thing that way. Now my green marker is again still on the dry side. I still haven't gone through and fixed it. But I decided I wanted to add some darker color, so I did go in with the G07 and then the G05 worked a little bit better. But before I get to the next one, I actually did get around to re-inking my marker. If you've never re-inked your markers before, I also have a video that I will link in the description on how to, um, how to replace nibs, how to refill the markers, and all that sort of thing. So I, did a little marker maintenance so you know how to take care of your pens because these Copic markers will last your lifetime if you take good care of them. You can replace nibs and keep re-inking until the cows come home. So they're a great investment that way. So for the hat, I'm just flicking some color along the bottom and then on either side. And that's just, you know, the same thing as, as on the, the green part of the hat, put extra shading on both sides but then a little bit at the bottom. And then I'll go in with a lighter gray and soften out all those areas where I've put that, that color. And just lightly flicking so that I, I get that soft edge. You could also go in with a colorless blender and soften it if you have hard edges still. But I'm trying to do it really quickly. The quicker you make your little strokes, the better off you'll be. Now, upper left lighting, what, one of the ways that I decide which way I'm going to do my lighting, because I can clearly, as you can see, I can do any direction that I want. I make whatever direction the stamp is facing be the direction the light is coming from, because then the light falls on their face. There are some times when I deliberately do it like a whole crazy way. If I made the lighting come from the upper right on this one, it would be from behind him, and it would be really dramatic. It would be a very interesting thing and it would tell a different story if I did that and maybe I'll do that sometime maybe I'll, I'll do that over on Periscope at some point just to show you what it looks like to do lighting that's completely outside the, the realm of normal and um, maybe the day that this goes up on the web would be a great day to do a Periscope video on that but it's a lot of fun to play with really different lighting I really enjoy that exercise it's educational for my art brain and a little bit of a challenge too. So if your coloring ever becomes easy on a stamp, challenge yourself to do something 
Nutsy. So I'm using the same colors again to just blend out the hat. I'm, I've been alternating reds and greens and stuff on their different outfits. Some people like to put a red hat with a green rim, but I did white rims on all of them and then just alternated their little outfits to decide whether or not their outfit matched their hat or not. And this one is going to be one where his little, his little suit and uh, his boots will match, but his pants will match his hat. And you can set these kind of things up in any old different way. But again, as we've been exploring during this tag series, it's always fun to do a couple of something and then experiment, do each one slightly differently so you can see what you like. Because if you try each one of these, you might decide, well, you know, I really like the look of this. And then you can do 10 tags in the same way and just get lots of good coloring practice in by following one tag that you've already achieved. So next I'm just going to be smoothing out that color using my mid-tone to just spread more color out. And next I'm going to go for this little, it, you know, you can do some really simple things with ornaments. All I did was leave a highlight, put a, a C shape of a shadow and then blend it and left it really simple. And it still looks special. If you put some glossy accents on that, it would look even more amazing. And I didn't have to go through major contortions to make it look like a shiny globe. So you don't have to put yourself through craziness in order to do that. And next I'll just soften out the, the grays, the light grays. And here I'm adding just a little bit of shadow to his legs. I added it right over top of the red and the, the white stripes. The shadow on the bottom, his shadow goes behind him off to the right, and then there's a little circle shadow right underneath where that ornament would be. Next, we're going to go for middle lighting. I'm calling it middle lighting, but it means light coming out from the middle. So they're around the tree, which means that the guy on the left is going to have his shading on the left, and the guy on the right is going to have his shading on the right, because the light is coming from the tree itself. And this is something that I didn't get really elegant with, but you could totally make this a night scene and just barely have their faces coming out of the background. I mean, that would be really striking of an image on either a card or on a tag. And it would be a lot of fun to try to make it look like this tree is actually lit up. There are those triangular-ish shapes on the tree and you could leave those blank and color them as if they were sort of some garland running around the tree, but I have a different plan for them, so hang tight on that. I'm just going to go over these and add some shading on both sides of the tree. I'm not trying to make it look realistic, I just wanted to make it, I don't know, look somewhat dimensional in a way, almost like it's a metal tree is what I was sort of going for. And then fill in all of the colors around it to try to soften out all that color. I'm leaving that highlight edge around the entire left and right side because that's what's going to make it look on the shiny side and then just finish that off and sometimes I'll let it dry and then I'll go back into it if it starts looking weird because there's a little mottling there but I think I kind of like it on the tree to add a little different contrast to it and here again I've got another little spot where I had a, a little leakage over the edge and if you just color outside of that spot and let it slowly work on pushing the color back in, then you know it's a lot easier than trying to scrub at it and scrub at it and fuss at it and then end up with a lot more pink bleeding all over the place. Red is one of the most difficult colors to do that with. <laughs> it's really, really tough. I decided to make both of these guys very heavily red in their outfits because that will pull them away from the tree and make them look very different from the tree. If I had parts of them in green, they would kind of look like they were on the same plane as it, but adding the second color and focusing on that really allows that the, the colors to separate from each other very well. So fill in all of my base color. And next I'm gonna go in with my shadows with the R89. And as, as I said, this is like my favorite shadow color. You can get away with an R59 it's not as juicy, it's not as beefy, and if this scares you, and if you have trouble blending with it, an R59 would be an adequate substitute, of course. But um, you can see the lighting on these guys. The, the one on the left has all his lighting on the left, the one on the right has all his lighting on the right. So you can almost see that that light is starting to look like it's coming from the tree as it shines out on both of them. 
to stamp this, by the way, all I had to do is mask that triangle and stamp both of them behind. The guy on the left still has stuff that sticks out. It would stick out on the right-hand side. So I just had to use a post-it note, basically, to cover that up so I could stamp the two of them behind the tree. And, uh, so now I'm just going to blend out some of these colors. This is my mid-tone. This R37 is just the nicest red. Really, really like it. And now I'll go in with some of the lighter red and just soften all of that color out. And it's time for the white fuzz on their hats. Again, keep the lighting consistent with what you've already done elsewhere on the piece because that's what's going to make it look like you've thought it through a little bit. And now I'll add just a little tiny bit of shading and stuff to the star and the Jingle Bell. The Jingle Bell is a separate stamp, had to be stamped onto the tree, so I stamped it so that the little tie on it would meet up with one of the lines. Blend out all of my grays so they soften out. You can do that also with a colorless blender. Uh, lots of people who um, are newer to coloring than me will end up using a colorless blender for that kind of thing, or much lighter colors in general, because I like contrast. I just roll that way. Now the silver pen, there's also a gold pen from the Uniball Signo line and you've seen me use the white pen a lot, but I decided on this one I was going to give them silver hair. That's why I didn't color the hair the whole time. I know there's probably somebody out there that was either getting ready to or has already typed into the YouTube comments that I missed all the hair, but no, that was planned. Ha ha, gotcha. And I'm just adding little details to them using the silver pen. It's a real simple way to add a little bit of shine. And if your blending didn't work really great, it's a great way, like those stripes would totally cover bad blending. On the tree, I just put dots all along each one of those lines, so it made it look like each one of them was a very delicate garland. And I went over the little string for the jingle bell, so it looks like it's all shiny as well. So there's lots of little details that you can add with a gold or a silver pen to make some of your tags look extra special. So what a fun set of tags. Aren't these absolutely adorable? If you want a chance to win one of these from me, then make sure you stop by over at my blog because there's a big giveaway going on all week long. And we are now halfway through the tag series for this year. If you'd like to see the other ones that have already posted, you can go to the link at the top. And the one at the bottom has last year's tag series. Both of those are playlists and you can check all the goodness out over there. Links are in the description for all the supplies as well as over on my blog. So I would recommend you check those out if you're interested in these darling little stamps. Alrighty, I will see you guys tomorrow. Have an awesome day and be sure to subscribe to get more videos from me. Bye-bye.